Chats, chats, chats with Leah. Hats, hats, hats. What are you saying then? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chats with Leah Hats. I'm Leah Hatsakis, and today I'm excited to share this conversation I had with my good friend Jessica Madsen, who is mostly known as Cressida from Netflix's hit show Bridgerton. So it was great to chat a bit about filming Bridgerton, the acting industry in general, and have a little bit of a chit chat and a catch up. So I hope you guys enjoy, whether you're watching it on YouTube or listening on any good audio platform. And I'll see you guys in the outro. This is Jessica Madsen. Before this, mm. I tried to get in the mood for just chatting about Bridgerton. So I was doing my makeup and I said to my Google, I was like, okay, Google, play the Bridgerton soundtrack. And it said, okay. Yes. No, no, it all went wrong. She was like, okay, playing Bridget Jones' diary. And I was like, <laughs> <gasps> oh no, I can hear her. She's just started it again. Because <laughs> I said the good. <laughs> okay, Google, stop. When you guys were filming, did they ever play that music whilst you're on set to like get you guys in the mood? No, I mean, we had, when we did the dances, we had music, but mm. they were always in, we had like little um, radios. I yeah. guess well, no, there weren't radios because we couldn't be like <laughs> coming in. <laughs> it would just be <laughs> a little head, like a little headphone, but just in one ear. Um, so yeah, the music would play and there was never any music playing around. No. Around us. It would just always be in there. And so, I think most of the time, yeah, no, we. I don't think we did dance to the music that's actually in the show. I don't think so. But they pimped it up, you know. They, we danced a lot to modern music, and then they put in this kind of whole amazing string quartet to it, and sort of kept it Regency but kept it funky modern. That's why a lot of the songs you're like, oh yeah, yeah. you're I like, that one. it's a weird feeling when you're listening to them because you're like, oh I. Like this jam, and you're like, oh yeah, I really like it. And then you're like, oh, I, it's because I know the song, but they made it Regency vibes. Yeah, yeah that's so I'll good. Keep it Regency. So you guys were basically all having like a little silent disco. If you all had a bit of music in your ears, that's amazing. A little silent vibe. <laughs> I mean, which in a way, like, yeah, I, I think it's funny now filming something with music you think of when you watch any show, and you know, like if it's a club scene and they're all dancing. Like, imagine actually having to sort of like bop and dance to nothing. It must be yeah. really difficult. Yeah, for sure. I mean, actually, it probably wouldn't be that difficult. You just make, you just want to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what's amazing is that if you were all dancing to something that's not what we see in the final edit, they make it look like it's also in time. So that's actually genius. I mean, some things I think were, were the songs in the final edit. Mm. I think, gosh, I really can't remember. It's like <laughs> so long ago. My mind's become like a sieve after this year. <laughs> Yeah. If you asked me what I did yesterday, I'd be like, not sure. Yeah, it was actually... <laughs> <laughs> That's the total wrong thing to say. <laughs> You're like, my mind's a sieve from a year ago, but then it's also a sieve from yesterday, so it's just a sieve. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a sieve. That makes me sound really thick. No, but you oh, were God. actually on this ages ago, and I remember when you were filming, and obviously no one knew what Bridgerton was... I don't even know if I really knew what it was. I just remember you saying, like, I'm doing a show, it's kind of set in this Regency era. And I don't know, I don't, I don't think you really, like, hyped it up very well, but I thought it was going to be just a bit boring. But then it turned out to be, like, the, <laughs> the most amazing I didn't make show. it sound boring. No, no, you didn't, you didn't make it sound boring. But what you do is you don't brag about things and you're not very, like you're not one of those actors who's like yeah and it's this and it's that and like you're just quite like low-key you're like yeah I'm doing this show which is quite nice because then when it comes out you're like omg this is such a great gig like it was so amazing when we were filming it I think we knew it was something special and it was an special experience for all of us I mean the sets were insane and the costumes were amazing and hair and makeup so it did feel really special. And like walking onto set, I mean, for me, it's definitely the biggest production I've been in production wise. And, and um, yeah, it was like incredible. And going to those locations and, and seeing what is a huge part of like history in this country, you know, it was just amazing. And a lot of people lived in those um, buildings. Was it the National Trust properties? A lot, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, in my head, I thought you meant like people were still living there and like when the crew got there, we had to like move out the lords and ladies to set up for the shot. <laughs> no, but they do live there. 
Yeah. Wait, still now? In some of the houses. Yeah. Wow. Who are these people? They must be just living like a different life. I know. Pretty amazing. I wouldn't know how to fill that space. Oh my gosh. Imagine the cleaning. No thanks. <laughs> Um, but what was it like being part of something this big? Because obviously the roles you've had before were never like, I don't know, you have had a series regular role in Tina and Bobby before, but it wasn't quite as big as Bridgerton. I didn't think it, we ever thought it was going to be quite this big. Hmm. You know, I think it was like a real shock to be Netflix's number one watch series of all time. It's like pretty amazing. Um, but I think it came at the right time. Yeah. You know, like... It, we've all had a really tough year and Christmas time is like the perfect time for it to come out because everyone's like, you know, they just want a good binge at Christmas. Everyone watched it like in two days or one day. And I feel like it was the talk of the table, even at Christmas, like on actual Christmas day, my family were like, oh my gosh, you seen Jess? I was like, yeah, of course. I was like, I knew, I was like, I knew about it before you guys. <laughs> Jess and her side eyes. Yeah. Did you enjoy playing Cressida? Yes. Yes, I did very much. I, I can now can't imagine you playing someone who's not as um, sassy. <laughs> yeah, got to have a bit of sass. And wit. She's yes. quick. She's clever, you know, which I, I love. And, and Chris Van Dusen, I mean, when I auditioned for it, the writing, I was like, wow, I can see who this person is just by... The scene that I was given I was like this is you know punchy it's quick it's dynamic and I think what's great in in those days you know you couldn't you couldn't lose face you couldn't be nasty you couldn't be clipped you really had to like you know sustain all of your dignity and decorum and and be polite in a sense and so her words are so carefully you know manipulative and she is like prodding she likes a little prod and <laughs> stick in a twist but with with these words that keep it just on the right side of the dignity line you know she's so dignified she's like all dignity yeah well, there's, all dignity yeah she's dignified for sure there's like times where you go is she going to go further is she going to push it even further and then she doesn't but she's remains yeah. in that place of power and you're and you as the audience member you go like i hate her <laughs> and it's <laughs> Obviously, I don't hate you, but you do an amazing job of playing Cressida. And I think, well, just from the reaction online, I think you really, like, touched a few people's nerve. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad. There was one, one, um, one person put up a, a comment on something I'd posted saying, um, I want to scratch your eyeballs out. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I was like, you're welcome. You are so welcome. At least a thank you came after that. <laughs> I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's great because it's it's so fun with this era to have a musicality in the writing, you know, where you can sort of like go forward and pull back. And I think I've really, you know, at drama school, we did a lot about musicality of things and, um, you know, the way you speak and it being musical in a sense. And I think she has... I've had that opportunity with this to really sort of play around with that, you know, going forward and sort of bringing it back. And yeah, there's just so many, it's so dynamic in so many levels that you can, that you can play around with, which is really fun. And they were so free on set for you to do that, to kind of test different things out and see what, oh. you know, see what you could do and play around with it. Wow. That's so cool. So would you be able to, would you on set sometimes improvise in the style of the speech? you were using or no no we didn't do any improvisation um I think I'd probably be a bit too risky <laughs> I'm not sure with our modern language how well we do that um but no it was more about kind of thinking about um the intention of the scene and you know if you wanted to try something a little bit different the last take because I think as an actor it's quite easy to get into something quite repetitive which doesn't make it fresh which is why I do love doing uh, screen acting is because, you know, you meet, you do the scene and it's all about feeding off what the other, I mean, it, that's the same in theatre, but, you know, I feel like with, with screen, there's just not as much rehearsal as there is okay. in the theatre. And so it's like that day you go, okay, so we're doing the scene today and like, what's going to happen? We're just going to be even, we're going to be super engaged and see what happens. 
and see where we go. How many times would you do a scene before it was recorded? Well, we would, we'd run the scene with um, all of the crew watching mm -hmm. and then we would stage it. So we'd sort of, you know, decide what our movements were in the scene and, and where we were going to go. Um, and we'd probably do that a few times and then we'd shoot it. And then obviously you have different setups within one, with, within one scene. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I've got to do it really, really good now because this one's my shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think I think a lot of actors feel like they do their best performance when they're not on camera. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like I've, I would never want to cheat another actor. No. So I'd always want to try and do my best so that I always gave that performance for the other person. Because I know you hear a lot about actors, you know, sometimes not even being um, there for for the other person when they're doing their take and the camera's on them. And I just, I don't, I don't think that's great. <laughs> I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan. So for anyone listening who's thinking, what on earth are they talking about? It would be basically if the camera's not on the actor, it would be a bit of a dirty move yeah. in acting for someone to not give it their best shot um, for their scene partner, basically. Yeah. yeah. I, and for yourself. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> You don't want someone to do that to you either. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is what's so scary is, you know, sometimes where you watch like behind the scenes on massive Hollywood productions and when it's not that person's take, they'll just get a double in to do the lines. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I guess it also depends on what the actor is doing, whether they need to be taken away to get ready for the next scene. Um, so they need a costume change, they need a makeup change, hair change, all of that kind of stuff. Or, you know, if they're back to back working scenes all the time, mm -hmm. people do get exhausted. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like there's probably another reason for it. It's relative. Like, yeah, there's like more than just one reason for it. It's not just that perhaps maybe it appears that that actor is a diva. It's actually just like, no, they're just needed really quickly again for something else. Yeah. I just I just had a memory when we were in your kitchen and I think you just finished filming season one and we were just talking normally, but then some of the words that were coming out of your mouth were quite like Regency-esque. <laughs> and I feel like... <laughs> Cressida had like merged her way into your real life and like you said something like it was like Duffy protest and I was like you what Jess like what are you talking about and you're like sorry after eight months I just I just went back in time yeah no but it's true I was I was walking uh the dogs I mean not recently but a while ago just after I finished filming and I would just I said Hendrix make haste and I was like Make haste. Right. Okay. Hendrix, make haste. Does it mean get out of the way? It means like, hurry, let's go. Oh, hurry, let's go. Make haste. Okay. I think. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I thought it meant. Yeah. All these lingos. You must have learned so much lingo. Like offset, did you try and stay in it or did you just turn, turn into the normal dress? Especially the scenes where we do it in the background, you know, where Joe <laughs> and I are sort of, Joe, who plays my mum, um, we're in the background whilst they're doing like a scene up close and we're at the ball. We would always, you know, be in character. Yeah. And what was, what was really funny is we'd sit there and be, we'd stand there. And, um, <laughs> yeah, you're you know, like, there was no sitting stand, at the ball. <laughs> it was like, I don't think we sat down. Um, we would stand there and, and we would, we would like, you know, eye people up and rip what they were wearing apart and just, and then afterwards when they'd be like cut, we'd be like, or we'd have to go up to someone, or we felt the need to go up to someone and be like, I'm so sorry I looked at you that way. <laughs> Didn't mean to look at you that way, like no hard feelings. Um, especially because well, when we first started, you know, a lot of the supporting cast and um, yeah, we'd be standing around and, and they, you know, they might not necessarily know the storyline or know who we were because we'd just come in, come into the show for like the first ball. And I remember looking at people and really like eyeing them up or if they walk past being like, you know, looking at them like, don't fucking come near me kind of thing. And um, afterwards I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I play, I play someone who's, you know. Really a bit mean. <laughs> and, and not, but you know, yeah. she's got problems. Uh, <laughs> got problems. I never want to say she's nasty because I don't no. want to judge her like that. And I don't because I do love her, but I know what you mean when people are like, so who do you play? It's like, well. Yes. Um, but yeah, we'd feel the need to sort of apologise to people. That's so <laughs> We're not funny. that person, don't worry. 
Yeah, you're you like, come near us. Please don't hate me in real life. Like, I'm just doing my job here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so did you make any friends sort of outside of your family circles? Obviously, we only really see you and your mum together as a unit. We don't really see you hanging out with the other families. Or do we? Am I forgetting? No, we don't hang out with the other families. I mean, Joe had a lot with Polly, who is Lady Featherington. So they had their sort of little girl gang. Yes. Um, and I just decided to, uh, you know, pick on poor Daphne. Oh, poor Phoebe, yeah. Who is actually wonderful. And I get on with her very, very well. Yeah, nice. But everyone's amazing. Like, we were so lucky with our cast because we all got on really, really well. Yeah. And Nicola, I don't know Good if you... Babes. I don't know if you saw, because you don't have Twitter, but Nicola actually tweeted... Um, Cressida is really nice in real life. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Nick. She's great. She's super fun. Yeah, she's a babe. And I love the twist. I mean, I won't say it in case anyone here has not watched Bridgerton, but I absolutely loved the twist and I, I kind of saw it coming but didn't. And I was like, oh, I love it. I love that they haven't kept us waiting for that, for the future. Like, I love that we've been let in on it. Yeah, because I think it's in book five that you find out. What? That's crazy. Yeah. So in the books, I mean, which are very, very different in a lot of ways to the series, but, you know, they're keeping the main framework and the characters, they're just sort of jazzing it up for TV yeah. because it has a very different format in the books. It's very focused on Daphne and Simon. And, you know, I think what what, what they've done really well is bring on um, a lot more of the ensemble characters in it, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. And then you have lots of different other little storylines going on. But yeah, it's book five that you that you get the big reveal. Oh my gosh, you'd have to be so into it as a reader to wait that long. I mean, I'm sure they're very addictive. So did you have to read quite a few books before you took on the role? Like, did you have any time or did you get the job and then go straight into filming? Like, was there any time to do the research? Um, I got the job and then I had, I'd say maybe a month and a half or two months before we started filming. Um, and I did, I read book one and book two, um, but I haven't read the other ones yet. Yeah, nice. But I do I do sort of know the, I know the outlines of what, of what goes down and, and the pairings and who marries who and all of the Bridgerton siblings who they end up with. I don't know if I'd want to know as an audience member, just because I like this. I Also, I don't want to do like a Harry Potter on myself where... I hope it's going to be like that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? When, when Harry you, Potter on yourself. Yeah. Like if, what do you mean? Like, if you're someone who reads the books first before watching mm. the TV or film, then you can get an idea about something and then when it does or doesn't happen, you get you feel might let down as an audience member. Um, so I think with Bridgerton, I'm just going to go for the show. And that is such a lazy option. Is that I'm just going to do the show, actually. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the show yeah and so do you know in your research who you might marry like is it public knowledge if I googled who does Cressida end up with I'm not really sure um I think in the books I've I mean I've heard from word of mouth what people have read and have said but I think she ends up marrying someone who's older um probably who she thinks is really rich and marries him and then I think he dies and she's left with nothing. No, oh my God. <laughs> Which would be great. Oh, I'd love to film that. Can you imagine? Like, yeah. There she is, oh my such God. high hopes. Gets done over. Rotting away in her, you know, house. Yeah. That's just sort of falling apart. Oh my God. I, think, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, I'd love that. <laughs> But when, I don't know if you remember, but when you'd finished filming, you were like, oh, like, Leah, do you know what? Like, blink and, blink and you miss me, don't worry. Like, And I was like, of course I'm going to watch it, of course I'm going to watch it. And I feel like you've got a little bit of a habit of any job you do, you always sort of tell people close to you, like, oh, I'm not expecting you to watch it. Like, don't worry about it. Like, don't do that thing where you, you <laughs> feel like you've got to watch something. And back in the day, you actually did do a show where... You blink and you literally miss you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I didn't know. And I had um, yeah. my feet in stirrup. Is stirrups? Yeah. No, stirrups is a horse. No, no. In, what is it when you're... Yeah, like your feet in stirrups, which is, I think that's what they're called, where you have your feet like yeah, that when, up on the doctor table. Yeah, when you're getting stuff checked out. <laughs> yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah, that's 
stirrups. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think that's the word. I mean, I definitely know you put your stirrups in when you go riding on a horse. See that? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know that's not fancy. But yeah. I think so. But yeah, I remember that job. That that was my first job out of drama school. And like you did a, I think you did a cough in it. I did and, a cough. And we all watched it and we were like, well, there's the cough. <laughs> Um, I had a scene, but it was it, it was cut, yeah. Yeah, so I think maybe that might be the reason why... <laughs> That's programmed me. Yeah, so you're like, don't worry about it, guys. Like, I'm, not, I'm hardly in it. So when you said that about Bridgerton, I was like, okay, well, like, I better go and see this blink or I miss it. Otherwise, you know, what's she been doing for eight months? <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I did. And at first I did that thing where, like, you know, as a friend, if you know someone in a show, you either make the decision to watch the whole thing or you just skip to their bits and watch their bits <laughs> so right so I did the thing where you skip and then I was like do you know what Fast no forward. I'm just gonna watch the whole thing because I actually was like loving it um but yeah I just wanted to let you know I did I did watch the whole thing with you or without believe, you yeah, absolutely please. yeah um <laughs> so did you know anyone on the set or did you just were you did you know anyone from before on other jobs because you've done quite a few other like tv jobs and film no I think I knew of people but I didn't know I, I hadn't met anyone beforehand yeah but you've formed some good but, friendships yes I have and the minute we sort of all had the read through it was straight into a whatsapp group and chatting and which is really nice because then you kind of get to know everyone and you know that's really nice and as an audience member like when you're watching anything or you see on the Bridgerton social media that they've posted like a behind the scenes and you see two characters like standing together offset but they're not on screen together you're like oh my gosh they know each other isn't that mad (laughs) And you, yeah. like, you have this moment where you're like, God, isn't that crazy that they're friends? Um, which is obviously really stupid because you're all there together. Yeah, I mean, we were lucky because a lot of the big scenes, like the balls um, and the soirees, you know, everyone's always together. And so you kind of get an opportunity to just hang around with everybody yeah. and get to know everyone. Um, and then the other scenes, uh, you know, where there are, like Sabrina, who... Um, Actually, I, I don't think we... Actually, that's not true. She was at a ball. She was at one ball. Um, and we did have the opera when we went to go and watch her and she was singing in the opera. But a lot of it she, you know, had with Johnny and um, wasn't really in the big crowd scenes, being, you know, being an opera singer and and not, you know, not within the um, realms of, of our world, social world. <laughs> so for any listeners, can you remind us who Sabrina is in the show? So we'll see. Yeah, so she plays Sienna, um, and she's the opera singer. And, um, yeah, so we we had, we had were on set quite often together because all the stuff that happened at um, Madame Delacroix's. Yes. So, um, which is the um, dressmaker. He's yeah. wonderful and such a cool person in real life. She's a good friend. Um, yeah, and so, you know, we, we were on set quite often, and so everyone got to know each other quite well. Yeah, that's, that's a long nice. way of trying to say we all got to know each other quite well, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you say. <laughs> no, that's really, really nice. You're not on walking about. <laughs> Before all this, I remember that you did you did two films. I think one of them whilst we were living together at our little flat in East London. And so that was a horror film. And then you did another horror yeah. film after that. So how different was all of that compared to being on Bridgerton? So different. I mean, with Bridgerton, I remember going into costume fitting and I was like, wow, I don't remember the last time I wore a dress. Wow. In anything. Yeah. All had makeup, all, you know, incredible hair. When I did Dark Light, um, I don't think I, I really barely wore makeup. Apart from the beginning where she, where she is slightly more sane, I did, I was allowed some mascara. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, it's a mascara day. Yeah. Um, I like being quite raw and, and a bit, a bit red, you know, raw and ready. Yeah. Raw. raw. <laughs> you're like, raw. Like, you know, when raw. You, you say a word and you're like, is that, is that how you say that word? <laughs> so, yeah. Raw? Yeah. Um, super, super Yeah, it was different. very different. Yeah. 
And obviously, like, this was probably one of the first jobs that you won for a really long time. It actually took up nearly a year of your life. Yeah, it was eight months. But it, it, it felt like it went really quickly. I think it might have been because all of it was shot in a pre-COVID world. And then you guys yeah. kind of, you guys finished just before COVID or I can't quite remember. We did. We had our wrap party and then it felt like what must have been a week and then we were into lockdown, maybe two weeks, but it was very, all COVID stuff happened very soon after. Yeah. Wow. Which is mad. Yeah. So what have you been up to for like? I feel like that was my last outing. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing I ever did before COVID was see you. Yes. And we went to the pub for dinner. Oh, I that remember. That was the last, the last thing I did. That was so And special. we were like, this COVID thing. And I was supposed to fly to LA in the next two days. And I just went outside and like had a little chat with my manager. And she was like, don't come. Everything's closing down. And I was like, what do you want about everything closing down? Yeah, I remember. Was it everything? She was like, yeah. We sat there and I was like, do you know what, Jess? I think you should just go. Like, <laughs> why don't you just go to LA, do some writing for a bit, just like get your headspace, go meet your manager out there. And then you had that phone call. She was like, don't come. And and that was, <laughs> and then, and then fa- to come. <laughs> fast forward a year and a bit and here we are. Like, yeah. I know. And do you know what? I just, I just had a memory of when we were at our old flat and your phone rang and it was an American number and you turned to me and you were like, oh my gosh, whenever it's an American number, I've, it means I've either got a job or bad news. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And then you picked up the phone and it was like a three-way call between your like American management and your UK management. And it was good news. You, you had got a, a big job and um, it was so exciting because I was like sitting on the stairs being like, oh God, like, am I going to have to like comfort her in a moment? Like, is she, uh, are they going to drop? <laughs> <laughs> I think like life's quite, you know, for actors, it's quite scary because you, you go into all these auditions, you know, the, the amount of tapes you do, the amount of things you audition for, like since you left drama school, you've probably done over a thousand, or I don't even know how many auditions. It's just mad. I couldn't count because I don't keep them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like otherwise, I would have storage. My storage would be overloaded. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of tapes. A lot of tapes. For Bridgerton, did you do a tape or did you go in face to face? I went in face to face. That's nice. Do you prefer it? Which I like doing. I don't know if I prefer it. I think they're very different. You know, when you go in face to face, you kind of have this adrenaline and energy and you know you've only got a few chances to get it right. Mm. So you're like, got to go in straight away and nail it. Um, you know, and it's also it has an element of surprise because you, you know, the casting director will say like, okay, try it this way, try it that way, or they're looking for this kind, you know, they're looking for this, or they're interested in, in this, let's try it this way, because I know that that's what they are leaning towards. Whereas a lot of the time you don't have that information when you're doing a tape at home, mm-hmm. necessarily, unless it's, you know, quite clear on the um, breakdown. But then what I do love about doing it at home is you have the space and the time, and you can really change it up. Sometimes I'm like, let's do it completely different, and I'm like, it's not completely different. Yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes it's like, yeah, you could do something completely different. Um, you know, and you can work with a friend who you feel really, really comfortable with and also who knows your sort of tendencies or, you know, or who you trust in so much that they can just say, no, I don't think that works. Let's try it this way. I remember James, like one of my best mates, James, he um, who I did Leatherface with, he's a crack of a person he's a great human being and um he was like I feel like I need to hold something that's worth something to you that if I dropped it it could break yeah and you've got to you know you've got to do the scene where you're like really focused on me not dropping it just to mix it up yeah that's nice and so I do really I enjoy doing it at home as well oh my gosh except then you have to look back and watch yourself and I'm not really a fan of watching myself no and picking which one and then you end up going like I don't know which one. Like, <laughs> I've done so many. Sometimes I'll just spend like, I don't know, a good four hours doing one tape. So time consuming. Yeah, and then go with the first one I did. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> but like the difference just from hearing that doing a tape with like a seasoned actor compared to like no shade but like a family member who <laughs> is probably Oh just god, like... never. I would never do that. <laughs> like the I couldn't. Oh my gosh, no. just the fallout. If I did it with my mum, she'd be like, I don't believe you. <laughs> and I remember my mum used to do that when I was little. I would come in and do my, um, you know, like you do the lambda, yes. you do lambda, you know, lambda exams. Yes. And I'd come in and I'd be, I was so serious when I'd ever, you know, had to do my speech and I'd come in <laughs> and I'd do it. And my mum would just go, I don't believe you. No, stop. And I was, yeah, she would. She's... And she, she wasn't a pushy mum in any way, shape or form. She was just very honest. Yeah. And she was like, I think, no, she was like, no, I just, I think you're just, you know, I think you're pushing. I'd be livid and I'd go away and really think about it and be like, right, okay, come back and do it again. And she was like, yeah, I believe that. But it was great because it was all about believing. Yeah. My, you know, it was all about, I don't believe you or I do believe you. It was never about that looks good or that works. Yeah. It was always about like, what's the truth of the scene and what this character is trying to say? You know, Because I think it's so easy to um, for an actor to get into the habit of, doing things that work, that they think work and look good mm. and are funny or serious or any of that kind of thing, you know, as opposed to what's organic and what comes to you. That's amazing that your mum was actually going for truth then, because if, if anything, that's like the best direction she could have. She's your biggest fan and your biggest critic. <laughs> She's great. She yeah, she's my biggest fan. I'm my biggest critic. She's absolutely great. I think someone in your family who is actually legit your biggest fan is your brother's wife, your sister-in-law. She yeah, is... She's your biggest she's fan. By, she, by us being friends, she's actually now become my <laughs> biggest fan, as well as your biggest Yeah, she loves she's you. She's just such a cheerleader. She's just amazing and... I, yeah, she's great. It's nice that you've got like a, you know, a good supportive family around you, you know, for years, everyone, I, I know that everyone believes in you, you believe in you. And it was, it's really rewarding when something as big as Bridgerton comes on TV, because you're like, go on, Jess, like, for you. Oh, thank you. I, no, I mean, I just think that like, so many people, you know, come and go, people give up on their dreams. And like, for you, there's like, yeah. there's there's a direction, there's like somewhere you're going. And there's what I quite like about you is that you, you're you not quite like easily pushed off off track. You're just like, no, that's where I'm going. There's just... no plan B. <laughs> I don't know where else I'd go. <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, what could I possibly do? No, that's what it is. I think like the best actors, they're like, I actually can't do anything else. Like I have to act. Otherwise that's that's it for me like I think it's also just accepting the fact that you know a lot of the time I think people get really frustrated with the world of what the business is as well because you know it's it's not just jumping from job to job some people are really lucky and they do mm. but a lot of people wait around and you know wait patiently for a job to come up and and some people don't even get those opportunities. I've been so fortunate with my reps that I have so many opportunities, uh, which sounds like so many I haven't seized or, you know, <laughs> gotten. <laughs> um, nah. you know, I'm like, I get so many opportunities. <laughs> um, uh, but I'd rather in that way than to have, to, than not to have any. Um, so I've always been really, really blessed with that. Blessed, yeah. but, you know, really, really fortunate. But yeah, I think a lot of people end up, especially coming out of drama school, I think a lot of people thought it was just going to be a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and I think I knew it wasn't and that I was okay with that and, and you know, waiting it out. Do you feel like at drama school you guys were told, like, it's not easy out there or were you told you guys would be fine? No, we were definitely told it's not easy. Yeah. And but I think when you're working as much as you are at drama school in terms of, you know, doing plays and lessons in classes and, you know, all kinds of things, dance, singing, everything, and you feel so active mm. and you feel really secure and comfortable in the space of your teachers and drama school and, you know, your, your peers, I think you do kind of have 
the feeling that maybe things and, and everyone has hope you know I feel like actors are the most hopeful people a lot of the time there's sort of undying hope that things will be great yeah because they just you know they enjoy we they yeah <laughs> we um really enjoy working you know everyone I went to drama school with loved working yeah you know they wanted to play that that's the whole point with telling stories like it is the best job in the world and it's so much fun um, you know, and you meet amazing people and you learn so much about life and people and and all kinds of walks of life through all the stories that you are you're doing. That I do I do just feel like yeah. No I didn't even know what I was really good. No, I don't know what I, I was heading that. towards. No, there. I love that. I think I think what's interesting is that when they do give people that chat at drama school where someone comes in or teachers say, like, it's not going to be easy out there, lots of you will eventually not be doing this anymore. For some reason, like, if you sort of look around the room, my memories of it are that people just think, yeah, yeah, that's not going to be me. <laughs> and you kind of, <laughs> they, there's kind of like a level of delusion in the room where they're like, it's hard for most actors, but actually I'm just going to fly. So that's fine. Doesn't apply to me. Whereas with you, you actually like, no, it's probably going to be hard. It's probably going to be a lot of rejection. And I, what I've always admired about you is that you don't think you're owed anything by the world or the industry. You're just like, I want to, you know, you don't deserve something unless you've worked hard for it. So I think that's kind of like something that, oozes from you but you don't know it does it's just there you're like now I'm gonna work for this I'm not just gonna get it handed to me on a plate which is quite nice I don't think anything's given to anyone in this industry on a plate really no not unless you're daddy famous no I'm kidding (laughs) even (laughs) even then you know even then I think it's really difficult for people whose parents are in the business or family is in the business because it's all you know people automatically sort of put that stigma on them to say, oh, they're working because of their yeah, parents or their family. That's tough. And whether that's true or not, most people who whose family are in the business that I know are also super talented and deserve and deserve what they get. Yeah. They might have a head that's a little bit more screwed on for the industry because they've been brought up in it. Mm. You know, I think etiquette, actors' etiquette is so important. Yeah. And I think you know, you get that from drama school, you get that from your family being in the business. And I think I got that from ballet, <laughs> you know, oh my <laughs> regimental. A lot of people don't know this about you, but you, you were really into like, you were really good at dancing was, and you yeah. were so into it. And I don't know, I think it was like, I don't know, like half a year ago or something, you messaged me being like, have you got any videos of me dancing? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what for me? And you were like, oh, um, just, yeah, I just need some footage of me for something. And I was like, it's finally happening. She's going to get a job where she shows off that she's a dancer. But um, yeah, that would that would still be great. Do you reckon you could still do it? I would love to do that. Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Get down, do the worm. I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe not the worm. You can do the worm, though. Yeah. But don't, like, throw your back out doing something like one of those internet trends. So. Yeah. I did hurt my foot trying to do the WAP. That was it. Yeah, I was trying to think of the name of yeah. what that move was. So sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Just another Friday night during lockdown. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's really nice about hanging out with you uh, is that I'm no shade to other actors, but you don't really talk about acting that much. Like, we meet up and we just have, like, real-life conversations that are non job related and I think it's quite rare now because I think a lot of people well rare now has always been rare I think a lot of people let their job identify them and define their entire personality but you could easily if someone didn't know you and they started hanging out with you they could probably meet you like 10 times before knowing that you're an actor which I think is quite (laughs) nice like are you are you naturally do you hold back naturally or is it just is it intentional I don't know. I guess it's just not the first thing I talk about when I meet someone. I mean, I love talking about acting and movies and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I don't think that's something I... I think it's something I'm very conscious of when I talk with friends. It's just sometimes it's just really boring (laughs) talking just about work. Yeah, no, it's not. (laughs) Unless someone asks you. Yeah. 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. No, you, we chat about films and TV and stuff all the time. But I think what I meant is that it's really nice that you're not one of those actors that's like... Darling, I'm an actor! Yeah, basically that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so, yeah, thanks for being an amazing actor and amazing friend. It's so lovely to have you in my You're life. Welcome, mate. And yeah. It's so nice to talk to a friend about stuff. I'm usually like super anxious to talk to people. I'm like, I'm gonna say something wrong, I'm not gonna make any sense. I'm gonna say and stirrups. It's so nice to be able to... What are stirrups? <laughs> say stirrups, what are Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there because we just carried on chatting, but that felt like a natural place for it to fade away. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. If you don't already follow Jess, all her information will be in the show notes or the description if you're watching on YouTube. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening and supporting this podcast. It means the absolute world to me. Uh, If you do enjoy it, share it with a friend. Leave me a nice review. It goes so far. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Mwah. Bye. Chats, chats, chats with Leah. Hats, hats, hats. What are you saying then?